So, it's the summer of 2021. The news has already gone out and the football world was electrified. Everyone in excitement and in disbelief. Cristiano Ronaldo has made a return to Manchester United. The world was watching his first game back on September 11th, 2021. 18 years since that teenager first stepped foot in Old Trafford and now, at 36 years old, he has returned. Ronaldo's comeback was nothing short of spectacular. He scored twice during the match. The superstar was back and on top of the world. It seemed like nothing could go wrong. But just 15 months later, everything had changed. Mocking his every move and branding him as an arrogant and problematic person. They called him washed and said he's finished. On December 30th, 2022, Ronaldo signed to a Saudi Pro League team, Al Nasser. From being on top of the world to just rock bottom in just 15 months, today, we're going to be taking a closer look at how the world turned on Cristiano Ronaldo, how arguably the greatest footballer ever turned into a laughing stock. In the beginning, everything seemed amazing. Even at 36 years old, Ronaldo was showing everyone in the Premier League how it's done. With 17 goal contributions in his first 8 starts for United, and in the Champions League, he was just unstoppable. In his first game against Young Boys, Ronaldo scored the opening goal, but they ended up blowing their lead after he was subbed off. Then, in the next game against Villarreal, he scored a winning goal in the 95th minute. Next, against Atlanta, he scored with just 9 minutes left. Two weeks later, in their second match against Atlanta, Ronaldo again came to the rescue with the last minute goals to salvage a draw. Villarreal, to finish at the top of their group, Ronaldo scored the opener with just 12 minutes on the clock, getting a standing ovation when he was subbed off with just 1 minute to go. At that time, everything seemed perfect, but there was already a problem brewing. By the time that second match came around against Villarreal, United had already swapped their managers with Oli out and Karik stepping in as a temporary replacement. Despite Ronaldo securing their spot in the Champions League knockout stages, Karik benched him in his first league game in charge, resulting in only a draw, but Ronaldo quickly bounced back in the next game, scoring two goals for a comeback against Arsenal. Then came the permanent replacement, coach Ralph Fregnant, who seemed to repeat the same mistake. In just his second game in charge, he benched Ronaldo against Young Boys, leading to yet another draw and almost jeopardizing their top group position. Rumors of tensions between Ronaldo and Ragnar swirled. Things took a dramatic turn when Ronaldo was left out the squad against Man City due to an alleged injury, but instead of supporting from the stands, he flew back to Portugal. Roy Keane expressed skepticism suggesting there was more to the situation that met to the eye. Upon his return, Ronaldo seemed rejuvenated, scoring a hat-trick in a thrilling win against Tottenham. He repeated the same thing with another hat-trick. It appeared as though things were finally looking up, but tragedy struck Ronaldo when his wife went to labor, resulting in the loss of one of their twins. Despite this devastating loss, Ronaldo showed remarkable resilience, returning to the pitch only five days later and scoring United's only goal against Arsenal dedicating it to his son. He continued to shine even through personal grief, earning awards like Premier League Player of the Month, finishing third in the Golden Boot Race. In a season mared by disappointments from other players, Ronaldo stood out as United's shining star, earning recognition as their player this season and securing numerous match-winning performances. When new coach Eric Ten Hag joined, hopes were high for a change, but it didn't really last long. By mid-July, fans and Ronaldo were frustrated, no new signings and Ronaldo wanted out. Things got out of hand. Rumors swirled, Bayern, Inter, PSG, Chelsea, none that made sense. Tensions exploded when he missed preseason. Every news outlet seemed determined to spin the narrative that Ronaldo was trying to force his way out the club. However, the reality was, his baby daughter was once again hospitalized, requiring his attention and care. Despite initially showing admiration for Ronaldo, the manager began to harbor doubts, assuming Ronaldo was lying about his intentions. Ronaldo felt a sense of betrayal, believing the entire club that turned their backs on him on when he needed understanding and support the most. Ronaldo had found himself in a challenging situation at United where Ten Hag, eager to establish his authority, resorted to humiliating tactics. This included benching Ronaldo frequently, sometimes only bringing him on for a few minutes towards the end of the game. In one particular instance against Tottenham, Ten Hag repeatedly instructed Ronaldo to warm up but never actually brought him on into the match until there was two minutes remaining. This treatment led Ronaldo to express his frustration by heading towards the tunnel before the game even ended resulting in him being forced to train alone as a form of punishment. In all fairness, it's impressive how even in the middle of all this mess, he still had the second most goal contributions in the team. But one month later, it had became clear that things were about to burst, and suddenly, 
the interview was announced. Ronaldo was going to have an interview with Pierce Morgan and talk about everything with no censorship. This highly anticipated interview with Piers Morgan was the most watched interview in sports history. During the conversation, Ronaldo opened up about feeling betrayed, suggesting that since his arrival there was individuals within the club who didn't welcome him. He specifically pointed out the lack of respect from Ten Hag and the club's doubts regarding his daughter's illness. The irony hit hard when on the same day his contract was mutually terminated, Glazer's family announced the club's sale following years of fan protest. However, the interview seemed to backfire on him, with the media working tirelessly to paint Ronaldo in a negative light, turning the narrative against him. As the World Cup loomed just two days after his contract termination, it all got out of hand. A clip surfaced of Bruno apparently ignoring Ronaldo in the locker room, sparking a media frenzy. It turned out, it was just a misunderstanding. If you watched the clip with the sound on, you'd quickly realize that they were just joking around. But even once that got cleared up, it didn't matter. Every press conference was always Ronaldo, 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 Ronaldo. No matter how many times he asked the press to stop bothering his teammates with these questions, this just got to his head. His performances seemed to get worse each game. And when he played South Korea, well, it was just a disaster. Not only did he pretty much give up a goal, he was also involved in a couple of really embarrassing misses and in the 66th minute, the unimaginable happened. Ronaldo was subbed off in a World Cup match and he looked completely demoralized. In the next game, Portugal started a knockout game without Ronaldo for the first time in 22 years. This was a significant low in his career. The situation worsened when Portugal had their greatest win with Ronaldo's replacement, Ramos, scoring a hat-trick. However, Portugal's tournament journey ended after they were knocked out and it seemed nothing could have taken Ronaldo's name off the headlines. Argentina clinched the World Cup, triggering a wave of comparisons flooding social media. Many said that the debate was over, declaring Ronaldo washed up and Messi the greatest player of all time. Just 12 days later, he made an announcement. A deal with Al Nasser in the Saudi Pro League. This was seen as absolute rock bottom. However, a few months later, Ronaldo delivered some extraordinary performances in the league, scoring the most goals in a year ahead of Haaland and Mbappe, totaling 54 goals in the calendar year. Moreover, he led Portugal to qualify for the Euros without a single defeat. Thanks to his 10 goals in 9 matches, it became evident that he was not the issue here and the media simply exploited his name for clicks. The world seemed to have forgotten who this man was. 